Welcome to another episode of Satisfactory. On this one, it is going to be an update on what's been happening on converting things and getting them up and running again in update 5. Well, what I did is here, since we've got 800 fuel coming out here, and we're only using up 450, that left 350 fuel extra. So, boom, I plumbed it on out wrapped it around these guys which are making the turbo fuel and so I've got that few the regular fuel coming in here and laid down 29 fuel generators it can handle 29.16666666 but I figured 29 was gonna be good enough now with that we're now at about 377 so yeah, uh, it, it's it's doing good, getting a little bit better with everything. I like it. Then also, just to make sure everything keeps working, I took the polymer resin that's coming out of the, these 10 refineries, so there's 200 per minute coming out. Boom, belted them on through. And let's, uh, uh, I don't know. Yeah, they're about the same speed. Okay, and, uh, I don't think I pointed this out uh, during the other episode, but I wiped out all of those storage uh, fluid buffers. Wow. Yeah, I, I got carried away in the previous playthrough. And what I did, oh yeah, see, and the polymer is being belted over, oops, getting ahead of the game, coming around. I uh, don't want it to get hit by the train, so I had to go up and over. Brought it over here. And belted it into this big old storage array over here. With all of the other polymer resin that's coming out of these 10 refineries. So a total of 400 polymer resin per minute coming out going into that storage container. So I set up 8 refineries here. Making residual plastic polymer resin with the water so it can handle 480 per minute and this power facility is producing 400 um yeah uh, this is about a quarter full so it's going to take a while to uh, eat up that extra 80 per minute so got all the plastic coming in here and just to test everything out I put up 7 storage arrays here and each one of these, whoo, 9,600 plastic. Um, so I've been having it run for about a little bit over three hours now, because I figured it'd take about, or four hours. It takes about one hour to fill each one of these. So in about uh, almost three hours, um, this is going to back up. But that's okay. All the polymer resin could be stored in there while I go and continue working on other things. So that is the update here on this fuel part. Now, I gotta go over to the aluminum facility quote unquote area. So I will see everybody in two seconds as soon as I get there. All right, back here at the aluminum factory. Um, that uh, array here that was uh, supposed to store all that silica, uh, it was completely empty. So I took it down to one and wow, everything is backed up right now. This is hot dog, I like it. So now we've got enough silica going over to the circuit boards and the high speed connectors. So that is, ah, it's nice to see. It took a while for everything to get backed up, but that was nice. Ooh, and I liked how that color changed. Or did it, or is it just, hmm. Nope, maybe, hmm. Maybe just the graphics. Okay, so that's taken care of. Oh man, it's so nice. Um. What I had to do with, boom, the scrap aluminum that was coming out, it was being processed over here in the iron uh, aluminum ingots. Then the aluminum ingots, oh crap, were being pumped into here to go feed the alkaline aluminum sheets. But um, I kind of bypassed it. I arranged it to where they all come down here and just go into this last storage unit here. It's going to take a hell of a lot, lot of time to get rid of that many outclad aluminum sheets. Wow. Wow. 
Impressive, but not very efficient. And this, I needed to set up an aluminum, aluminum, uh, aluminum casing product, product uh, production line to go and feed the radio controlled units. Ooh, I wonder if there's any left in here. Nope. Okay, we might have used them all up, or there might be still some left on the train. Ooh, we can wait for the train. But, wow, I did, I did not take this into consideration that when the silica backs up, so does the aluminum ingot production. You know what we might have to do? I'm going to do an experiment. I'm going to take some of that silica out of there, drop it into here, feed it into this awesome sink, which is disconnected to save power. Oh, and so is this one. What, what were you taking? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's what I was going to say for that scrap aluminum that was coming out. See, I got sidetracked. Oh, uh, was it aluminum scrap? Yeah, aluminum scrap. Just so it would get plugged up, I sent it here into these awesome sinks right here. But, um, let's do an experiment. See if we can get this factory up and running. Do this on the fly. I forgot to check this. I didn't think it was going to back up this quickly. Okay, so... Let's take all that we can. We'll get all of that running from both sides. Okay. And maybe we'll get some more aluminum scrap and aluminum ingots uh, up and a running. Uh, where is it? There it is. Okay, so we take all that and I'll take one stack just to be safe. And... Ignore the clipping that's going on. There we go. Alright, how many tickets do we got? 16 of them. Okay. It's chugging along. Yep, that's exactly what it took. Okay, got some aluminum ingots coming out. Okay. Time to set up an awesome sink right here. Okay, so let's get a splitter, and yes, we'll have it go right down the middle, set up an awesome sink right there, and we'll take it to that power pole, and yes, it would help belt any and all extras to go into there okay okay now that it's back up and running yes pumping out more aluminum ingots okay silica coming in from both sides of the facility love it now if we look right here yeah the bottom one here all of that aluminum scraps going in here and being fed off into those these three smelters. Same thing on this one. They're going down on the bottom part. And I don't know what's going on with this setup. Oh, there it goes. And how appropriate. And I thought I had uh, done a good game save time. But evidently when you manually auto save, save it, it does not reset the clock. So the aluminum scrap, yep. There, okay, it goes here into this top one and goes over. And even if it does here on this one, yeah, it does. In either way, the aluminum ingots are trickling out. It's good, that's up and running, okay. Then the aluminum ingots come over and make the aluminum, aluminum casing. Boy, evidently I can't say that properly. And let's see, I've got, uh, let's see, what are they, 60 per minute, and I've got, uh, what, six? One, two, three, four, five, six, yeah, 360 per minute coming out of here. This is a band-aid for the radio-controlled units, and we'll just wait for the train to come here, and we'll go catch it, because it'll be a lot faster. But, uh, yeah, when I get down there to the uh, radio-controlled units, I will show you exactly what happened. So I'll see you in two seconds.
All right, back down here at the radio controlled unit facility. Um, as you can probably tell, this one line ends right here. Well, that used to be uh, the rubber line coming from our facility right there. Um, it did curl in here to where the station was, um, but it's there no more. Um, the production on the radio controlled units, um, they now take aluminum casings, crystal oscillators, and computers. So that's why I had to wipe out that line. Now, the facility over there for the high speed, or the facility, it's kind of more over there, for the high speed connectors, it is working just splendidly. And also the facility that's right up there making the components for the AI limiter, and I think it's circuit boards and everything else supporting the high speed connector is working. Didn't have to change anything on that. Now, on the turbo motors, whoo! I will see everybody in two seconds and give an update on what's happening over there. Oh, I gotta get more trains over here and widen this up and just, or maybe make a river of trains somewhere. Yeah. At the turbo motor facility, this is what's going on here. It still takes uh, four items. However, um, we still have this one container stuffed with turbo motors plus what's backlogged in these machines. However, they take cooling systems, and I believe the previous one was heat sinks. Yes, right there. That's what it used to take were heat sinks right there. Well, um, here on the cooling system, yeah, they take alkaline aluminum, copper sheets to make the heat sink. But uh, see, that's one of the graphical errors that's going on now to make a cooling system it's going to take heat sinks rubber water and nitrogen gas or heat sinks motors and nitrogen gas i'm kind of leaning possibly towards this one but this pumps out six per minute i don't know uh, this this is for something later i'm still want to get mark three miners and we need supercomputers and those fused modular heavy frames modular frames um, fused modular frames because they take heavy modular frames aluminum casings and nitrogen gas uh, well I don't have a facility technically technically I don't have a facility making those and nitrogen gas, uh, no, not even that yet. But I need, I want to handcraft a few of these to get supercomputers so I can lay down some Mark III miners so I can get supercomputers up and running and just pump out a buttload of those. Now, off to the next update. So I'll see everybody in two seconds. On the way back to the next update spot, uh, I've got to tell you about all these uh, heat sinks. 47 containers stuffed with them. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna dump them into a, uh, an awesome sink or try to transfer all of them over, but oh my gosh. Yeah, it, 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 it's stuffed. Plus whatever's on that belt and I still have to tear down that facility that's making them. And again, I'm not tearing down too much until I figure out exactly what in the hell is going on and what I am going to do. But okay, again, see everybody in two seconds. And here is the nitrogen node right here. Or well, pressurized, well, whatever. But uh, yeah, I'm going to tap into it to go ahead and start making those fused modular frames because we need the nitrogen gas. So... Um, to extract the nitrogen gas, uh, let's see here. It says we need a resource well pressurizer. Um, can be placed on a resource well to activate it by pressurizing the underground resource. Well, it definitely sounds like it's fracking. So um, there's the little power strip. So uh, drop that there. Damn. That's a pretty good size. Okay, let's power this thing up. Oh, and uh, what I also did is I brought over 
a few modular frames and aluminum casings just to and gonna set up a couple of blenders and have them start pumping the fused modular frames out so that's why this is going to be a quick and dirty build wow what is this thing bam oh oh go go gadget arms Wow. Wow. So it is fracking. Okay. Cool. All right. So now we should be able to put the resource well extractors. And I'm going to just put the two blenders right up there on a quick and dirty build. So let's uh, aim that one there. There. And we'll have it join it up there. Now, let's see. Resource well potential 720 per minute. Well, let's see. How much do these guys pump out? Uh, or 720 on those. 120 on these. So that's 360. Okay. Well, let's uh, get over here. Oh, oh. Ooh, I forgot I'm in the, I'm using the hover pack. Okay, I got to be careful. All right, so if we put it let's start it here. And maybe if I do the swoop swoop. Let's do that. That. Okay. Now, the question is, how much room do these blenders take? I never really paid attention. Um, let's see, we got a blender here, so we want it uh, coming in from this side. This side should work. So if we put it right there. Okay, so it looks like we need a few more of these guys put in. And did that do it? Yes, that did it. Oh, as long as I don't die. Ooh, okay, jetpack. Jetpack. Okay. Now, we want fused modular frames, and it is going to take oh, 37.5 per minute. Oh my gosh, so we only have to tap into one of those guys. Okay, again, a quick and very dirty build. And you know what? I think just to make things simple, uh, no, no. Okay, I'll go ahead and lay this all out, and um, I'll see everybody in two seconds. All right, the quick and dirty build, and I mean it is dirty, dirty. Clipping. Ooh, big time here. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. well, for me it is. But, oh, ooh, that was a faux pas. Okay, yeah, clipping through there. We've got the heavy modular frames clipping down in here. Yeah, the pipe clipping through everything. But you know what? It's all being fed in there. So, let's go ahead, get these guys up and running. And there we go. Okay, gotta wait for the aluminum casings. Get that going. Yep, this is all filling up. All right, it's getting there. Oh, oh. Oh, I was, oh, yes, there we go. Yeah, and I just took it down to one resource node. Again, very quick, very dirty build. And let's see, it takes 40 seconds for these to pump out. And so let's see, we got one and a half per minute. So three per minute coming out. And I am awfully dang excited about seeing the first one, which uh, should be this machine. Yes, okay. Come on, baby. There it is. Damn, these things look nice. Wow. Wow. How cool. Okay, and the next one is on its way. And you know what we'll do? We will, there, right there. Boom, that's how we'll end it. Okay. That is it for the update on this one. 
next step, supercomputers. All right, thank you for joining me on this journey in Satisfactory. And as always, enjoy life and be safe. And drink the dew.